All right, well, it's starting to get pretty cold outside, which has got me thinking about ice fishing. And one of the things that I wanted to do this year is because I upgraded uh, my fish finder on my kayaks to a Hummingbird Helix 5. This is the model with Chirp and uh, GPS. I wanted to also use this same fish finder um, for ice fishing. And one of the neat things about this model is that it contains um, a flasher setting on it. Um, and so flashers are really popular among ice fishermen, although you can use a traditional fish finder approach. This just allows you to more precisely watch your jig as it drops and watch fish rise to take it. Um, so I want to take advantage of that setting and convert this to an ice uh, fish finder. Um, that turned out to be a little more challenging than I thought it would be because they're, uh, all the parts are kind of scattered around. And I wanted to integrate a system that made it easier for me to move my fish finder onto the ice unit here and back onto my kayak um, if I decide to fish open water through the winter, which I do plan on doing. So I'm going to go through the steps and um, parts and components that I did in order to get this to um, work. So the first thing it is, I bought um, this carrying case for ice flashers for Hummingbird. You can buy this on Amazon. I'll include uh, links to all of these products in the comments section below. Um, so I, I bought that. I bought the XI920. Um, that's the ice fishing transducer that goes with the Helix 5 units. And that comes with the flotation for your transducer. Uh, I also bought a spare power cable. Um, all power cables are standard on Hummingbird, which is nice. Um, and I wanted to keep a spare one, or use a spare one, because I want to leave the one that I have installed on my kayak in place. So I bought that, um, a couple alligator clips, a color coordinated so I can clip the battery in and out. Um, and then um, there's some more components inside here which I'm going to show you. So the case is really nice. Um, it has a zip up front which has a couple velcro spots that you can then close it in the back. And the back also opens up two zips. This gives you access to your battery um, which is stored back here and I'll have a description for that battery. A very specific size battery fits in this gap here in the shuttle. I'm going to show you how that works. Uh, the transducer can be stored on the outside. So here I have the transducer and I'm just storing the excess cord cordage there. I'm going to go ahead and pull this out, this whole unit out. It also velcro so you don't have to zip and unzip it every time. I'm going to go ahead and pull the whole shuttle unit out. Okay, there you go. Pull that ice fishing transducer through the bag here. And set this off to the side. And now you'll see on the back side here, there's actually a section for the battery to lock into this slot. That's why you want to make sure you get the right size battery. That should provide plenty of charge for a day out on the ice. And I got the alligator clips clipped into here. This shuttle. Perplexingly, they do not shell, sell this shuttle um, online, so um, you actually have to order the components, the handle and the base separately through Hummingbird's customer service, and I will give you the part numbers in the description below since I had to spend quite a bit of time talking to customer service to figure that out. I do not know why they don't sell the shuttle with the carrying case, but they just don't. Um, but it isn't that expensive. Once you get the two components, you just bolt them together. And what I've done here, um, is I've integrated a RAM ball mounting system because I use the RAM mounts for my fish finders on my kayak. This will make it really easy for me to transition this from the ice unit onto my kayak and back. So you see here I have a one and a half inch ball mount here at the base. Let me power this down real quick. That'll allow me to reach into the back of this case here, pull this out, and unplug it. And then all I gotta do is back off this RAM ball mount system and I can pop this whole unit out of here. And now I can leave this mount in here, that socket mount in here. I can take this and go and attach this to my kayak in just a few minutes and I'm ready to be out on the water in my kayak or I can come back, vice versa, put it on here and um, be ready to go out on the ice in a short time. So RAM um, makes a variety of ball mounts. I'm using the one and a half inch mount uh, or ball. And then you have this short arm socket 
um, that I can use to lock that in here. And then there's also uh, a mount that they uh, sell that attaches to your hummingbird fish finder or any fish finder for that matter. Um, so I'll have uh, descriptions for that as well in the links below. I really like these ram mount systems. It just allows you to move things so easily and this makes it really adjustable. So that's it. That's how I did it. You know, it set me back um, probably close to a um, hundred bucks to get everything that I needed, but I know that this is going to be a great unit to have out on the ice. I'm going to be able to GPS um, spots that I find structure, which panfish are going to hold on and allow me to come back and hit those same holes too that I know are productive in the past. And I'm also going to have the advantage of that down imaging on there so I'll be able to see structure a little bit better and clearer and differentiate it from schools of perch or other fish. So if you have any questions about how um, I put this together or any um, questions about parts or your fish finders uh, that you're, you want to convert for ice fishing, just put that in the comment section below and um, I'll see you out there on the ice or on the water. Until next time.